Greetings in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to Moments with Truth, which is a television outreach of the five gospel halls here in Tobago. We sincerely pray that you will be blessed as you view today's program. A pleasant good morning, a pleasant good day to everyone in this island and everyone in this great nation, the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. And everyone who is viewing this broadcast, Moments with Truth on the World Wide Web, we greet you in the lovely name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is our joy, it's our privilege, and it's an honor to enter into your homes with this broadcast, Moments with Truth. And we trust that our moments around the Word of God will be for the glory of God, for the good of everyone who views and listens to this broadcast. For those who are not saved, we trust that you will be saved. For those who are saved, we trust that you will be built up in your most holy faith. And for those who have gone cold, those who are backslidden, our heart's desire and prayer to God is that you will be restored to the bishop and shepherd of your souls. Before we open the word of God, shall we seek the Lord's face in prayer? Shall we pray? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. It is with reverence and with godly fear that we continue in thy presence. In the name of thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and Father, we thank thee for him. We thank thee that there is none like him, the incomparable Christ. We worship thee, Father, and thank thee. Because of him, this broadcast can be aired. Because of him, we have TIN. Because of him, we are alive, and the consequence of all these is the glory is God's. So we are praying today as we shall open thy word, that thou will speak, Lord, thy servants heareth. Speak with a voice that will awake those who are not saved, awake them out of their slumber, awake them out of their lethargic behavior, and cause them to flee from the wrath which is to come. We are praying, Father, for those who are saved, that they will be built up in their most holy faith. Backsliders will be restored. Father, we think also of those who are not well. Father, we are praying that thou will touch them, heal them, and restore to a sense of good health and strength. Father, we think of those who are mourning. We are praying that thou will comfort them. Thou art the God of all comfort. Again, we thank thee for TIN. We thank thee for the management, and we thank thee for the team. And we ask in thy blessing upon them. And as they continue with this good, great work, we are praying, O oh God and Father, it will be fruitful and also will be beneficial. We commit ourselves today looking for thine help and for thy blessing through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Today, I would like us to turn, please, to the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. The Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, and we shall read one verse. The Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, and we shall read one verse. The Word of God says, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Shall we read that verse again, please? The Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, and verse 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. We trust and we know that the Lord will bless the public reading of his word to our hearts and help us in declaring same for Christ's sake. Amen. Today I would like us to consider as our subject some undeniable truths. Some undeniable truths. Truths that you cannot deny truths that you cannot dispute undeniable 
truths. Unable to be denied, unable to be disputed. What are these truths? What are the truths to which we are making reference? What are the truths of which we are speaking? They are right in this verse from which we have read. The Acts of the Apostles chapter 2 and verse 36. Notice again what the word of God says. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. I would like us to consider first of all the fact the fact, the fact, thing certainly known to have occurred or be true. Something that has certainly taken place and is also true. What is this fact? What are these truths? First of all, when one looks at the fact, we want to look at the wickedness of man. The fact has to do with man's wickedness, man's evil, man's cruelty, man's viciousness. How do you know from this verse that man is evil, that man is cruel, that man is vicious? Notice what the word of God says. Follow us closely. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly, that God has made this same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. These men crucified the Lord Jesus Christ. And there we see the cruelty of man. There we see the evil of man. There we see the viciousness of man. Crucifixion is a death that goes slowly. When a person is crucified, you are crucified slowly. And you experience excruciating pain. And the Lord Jesus Christ was crucified by these people. It was slow. It was excruciating pain. The Spirit of the Lord tells us whom ye have crucified. So we are seeing the wickedness, the evil, the cruelty, the hostility, as well as the viciousness of man. When one looks at the wickedness of man, man's wickedness had a target. It was targeted at Christ, whom ye have crucified. So they had an Man had an aim, they had a target, and that aim was directed at the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice the word of God wants us to know, it was targeted toward one who was gentle, one who was mild, one who was merciful, one who never hurt anyone or could have hurt anyone. Men's, men's cruelty, Men's viciousness, men's evil was, was targeted at one who was gentle, gentle, mild, one who was love, one who is the personification of love, one who loves us with an everlasting love, the one who did so many wonderful things for mankind. One would have thought that men, women, boys and girls would have repented and trusted Jesus Christ as Savior. But on the contrary, the Bible tells us of man's wickedness, man's evil, man's cruelty, man's viciousness, man's hostility. It was targeted at Jesus, the one who is gentle, the one who is mild, the one who is merciful. It was also targeted at the one who was guiltless. The one who was spotless, the one who was innocent, the one who was without sin. One, one would have thought and one would have seen where those two malefactors, they were paying for their deeds. And one of them rightly said that. We are suffering for what we have done. In other words, those malefactors were evil men. They were vicious men. They were men who were marked by hostility. 
They were cruel and they were paying the price for their cruelty and hostility and viciousness. But this lovely person, the Lord Jesus Christ, he was guiltless. He was harmless. He was spotless. He was undefiled, separate from sinners, never sinned, could not have sinned. This spotless Lamb of God. But their wickedness had a target and it was targeted at Christ Jesus. It was not only targeted at the one who was gentle and the one who was guiltless, but it was, it was targeted at God. You say it was targeted at God? Of course it was. Well, how do you know it was targeted at God? Because Jesus Christ says the Bible, He is God. When you read John's Gospel, chapter 1 and verse 1, the Bible tells us, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word, verse 14, was made flesh and tabernacled among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So when they express their wickedness, when they express their viciousness, when they express their hostility, when they express their evil, they targeted one who was not only gentle, one who was not only guiltless, but one who was God, the creator of heaven and earth. They targeted this lovely person. Not only did they hostility, not only was their hostility targeted at one who was gentle, at one who was guiltless, at one who was God. But I want you to observe, man's wickedness was thorough. It was not only targeted. It did not only have a target. It did not have only had an aim. But it was thorough. It was complete. It was entire. The Bible says, therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God had made this same Jesus whom he have crucified, both Lord and Christ. It, they did not only have a target. Their wickedness was thorough. It was entire. They spat in his face. They buffeted him. They took the nails and they drove the nails in his hands, in his feet with absolute force, brute force. It was thorough. It was entire. It was complete. And there they were, mocking the eternal God himself. The one without spot, without blemish, and without wrinkle. And the Bible tells us, sitting down, they watched him there. Oh, the wickedness of man. Oh, the cruelty of man. Oh, the hostility of man. Oh, the viciousness of man. All these things were meted out at the one who was perfect, spotless, and without, without sin. Notice also when we think about it was thorough. Man's wickedness was not only targeted at Christ. It was not only thorough as it was experienced by Christ. But it was also telling. It was striking. It was something striking. Man's wickedness. It was also terrible, frightful, dreadful, excessive. When you think about the Lord Jesus Christ, who he is, one would have thought these men would have had some kind of fear for God and would not have done that kind of hatred, display that kind of hatred towards the Lord Jesus Christ. But on the contrary, it was awful. It was terrible. It was also troublesome, disturbing. It was disturbing to see what man was doing to the one who was holding them and keeping them alive. It was disturbing when one looks, when one reads concerning what man did to the one who said, let there be light and there was light. It was disturbing when one looks, when one reads at what men did to the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the eternal spotless Lamb of God. Very disturbing. But God wants us to know something else. It was not only terrible, it was not only troublesome, 
But the fact has not only to do with the wickedness of man, but the fact has to do with the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. There was a work that he has to do. There was a work that he must do. There was a work for which he came into this world. He said, I am come that he might have life and have it more abundantly. And when the Spirit of the Lord reveals the wickedness of man, the Spirit of the Lord, in the very verse from which we have read, reveals, discloses, tells us of the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Something was done by God. Something was done by Jesus for the glory of God and for the benefit and profit of every human being on this earth. Notice what the work was. The work of God, the work of the Lord Jesus Christ was voluntary. His work, what was done was voluntary. When Jesus Christ went at the place called Calvary, he was not forced into going there. He willingly offered himself without spot unto God. The work of Jesus Christ was voluntary. Voluntary. He was not forced. He willingly laid his life down. The just for us, the unjust, that he might bring us to God. What a wonderful person. What a wonderful savior. The work was not only voluntary, but God tells us, therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom he hath crucified, both Lord and Christ. Not only the wickedness of man, not only the work of Christ, not only was that work voluntary, but God says it was vicarious. In other words, it was done. He suffered on behalf of another. He suffered for every person in Tobago. He suffered for every person in the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. He suffered for every person in the Caribbean and the world. Wherever you are, Jesus Christ suffered for you. He died for you. We were the ones who should have died. We were the ones who should have experienced the wrath of God. But Jesus Christ, the guiltless one, the one without spot, the one without blemish, the one without wrinkle, the perfect Lamb of God, he said to his Father, Father, here am I, send me. Lo, I come in the volume of the book it is written to do thy will, O my God. And the Lord Jesus Christ in Gethsemane Gethsemane, he said, the, the cup which my father giveth me, shall I not drink it? The Lord Jesus Christ said to his father, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thy will be done. The Lord Jesus Christ took my place. The Lord Jesus Christ took your place. What love, what boundless love. The Bible tells us, Jesus tells us, for God so loved the world. He loves you, young man. He loves you, older ones. He loves Trinidad and Tobago. He loves the Caribbean. He loves mankind. That he gave his only begotten son. Jesus suffered vicariously for you and for me. There was not found anyone else who could have suffered. No angel could have suffered for us. Michael could not have done that. Gabriel could not have done that. No angel could our place have taken. Highest of the high though he, nailed to the cross, despised, forsaken, was one of the God three. The work of Jesus was voluntary. The work of Jesus was vicarious for you and for me. The songwriter says, bearing shame and scoffing rude, in my place condemned he stood, sealed my pardon with his blood, and everyone in Trinidad and Tobago who is saved, and everyone on the world wide web who is saved, we can say from our hearts, hallelujah, what a savior, bearing shame and scoffing rude, in my place condemned he stood, he took my place, Somebody suffered for me. Somebody suffered for you. And his lovely name is Jesus. His work was voluntary. His work was vicarious. But his work was victorious. Triumphant. Notice what the Bible says. 
Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. The work of Jesus Christ was not only voluntary, thank God for it. The work of Jesus Christ was also vicarious, thank God he suffered for you and for me. The work of Jesus Christ was victorious. How do you know it was victorious? God raised him from the dead. And thank God this day, as we are preaching the gospel of the grace of God, we are telling you of a living, risen, glorified Savior. The only one who died, the only one who was buried, the only one who is risen from the dead, his name is Jesus. No other man has died. No other man is risen from the dead. His body did not see corruption. And this morning we can sing with joy, the head that once was crowned with thorns, is crowned with glory now. A royal diadem adorns the mighty victor's brow. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. And we say like the songwriter, hallelujah. He is alive. Jesus is risen and he makes it his work victorious. He destroyed Satan. He crushed the serpent's head and he lives after the power of an endless life. The fact man's wickedness the fact the lord's work but notice something else god's witness god's testimony what was god's testimony god's testimony has to do with the exaltation of jesus notice what the bible says therefore let all the house of israel know assuredly that God hath made the same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ, the God of heaven and earth and sea. Our Father has highly exalted the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, my beloved son, sit thou on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. God's witness, God's testimony. He exalted Jesus and he has given him a name which, above, which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The Father has exalted him. That's his witness. The Father has endorsed him. Approved the work. When he raised Jesus from the dead, we say reverently, God was putting his stamp of approval upon the work of Jesus. He endorsed it. But notice also, God's weakness has to do with his enjoyment, the delight. Oh, the Father, as he viewed Jesus, paying the price for me and for you, and knowing very well, as Jesus Christ said, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it shall bring forth much fruit. Jesus knew he was not suffering in vain. The Godhead knew that Jesus was not suffering in vain. There was a delight. God, there was enjoyment in the heart of God to know that there'll be a harvest born as a consequence of the death of Christ. And thank God this morning for those of us who are saved. We are part of that harvest. Jesus Christ has saved us. And one of these days, he's going to take everyone who is saved into glory. And he will present us as a bride without spot, without blemish, without wrinkle to his father. And he will say to his father, these are the children whom thou hast graciously given me. God's enjoyment. But notice finally, God's entreaty. God's entreaty. God is making, God is entreating men and women, boys and girls, to come to this lovely passion. He wants you to come. And God's time for you to come is right now. Even though the Bible tells us of man's wickedness, it tells us about Jesus' work, it tells us about God's weakness. God is saying to you, Trinidad and Tobago, why don't you come as you are? Come just as you are. He's entreating you. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And if you come to him right now, he will save you. He will save you and he will save you now. But if you fail to repent, you're gonna die in your sin 
and you're going to open your eyes in hell. We are going to close this broadcast with a word of prayer. And while we bow our heads, bow your hearts, and receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, and have life, and have it more abundantly. Remember what the Word of God says. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made this same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, we come to thee at the close of another broadcast, Moments with Truth. We thank thee for these sacred moments. Father, we are praying that thou wilt bless thy word that has gone forth. Father, we have seen the wickedness of man, the cruelty of man. Father, the hostility of man, the viciousness of man. But we thank thee, Father, for the work of Christ that was voluntary. The work of Christ that was vicarious, he took our place. And it was victorious because he is risen from the dead. And God in his marvelous grace has highly exalted him as the prince and the Savior. Oh God, those who have listened to this broadcast and viewed this broadcast, moments with truth, our desire and prayer to God is that they will come to this Savior and be saved before it is forever too late. Bless thy word, save precious souls. The honor, the praise, and the glory will be thine through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Greetings in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to Moments with Truth, which is a television outreach of the five gospel halls here in Tobago. We sincerely pray that you will be blessed as you view today's program.